says, and she's very angry, and she has all the right to be angry. If someone is married to, to two women, and one of them does not have children, so is he entitled or allowed to spend more time with the woman, with the children or not? We have to see. If he, does, if he takes from her time and from her day, every single day, and stays with the first wife, with the kids, and he claims that he has to spend time with them, this is not permissible. He has to be fair. A day here and a day there. I have to sit with my first wife's uh, uh, children from um, Asr until 10 o'clock in the evening in her house with my wife just to take care of them and to look into their homework. No, this is not permissible. Bring your kids to your second. To spend more time with the first wife's house and justifying this with the children, this is not permissible. And then she says that if she doesn't have children and her in-laws neglect her, they always and this, is, this happens usually when a person takes a second wife. The family of the husband usually are uh, conservative. They are reserved. They don't want to be equal in love to both wives because they have this affection towards the first wife. She's the mother of the children and he's been married to her for 10, 15 years. And all of a sudden we devote the same love to the second wife who's new and she's the traitor. She betrayed her trust and she got married to a married woman as if she had committed a felony or a crime. No, this is not right. You love your son, you have to be fair to both of his wives because they are also uh, being loved by him. So she says that unfortunately some ignorant in-laws would not come to visit me, would not invite me on Eid or on weddings because of the first wife. So I feel neglected. Is it permissible for me to neglect them as well? If you mean by neglecting them that you do not call them and you do not invite them, this is permissible. Your in-laws are not your next of kin. See, your cousin, you cannot, or your brother or your sister, you cannot neglect them for a month, not calling them or saying that I'm not going to invite them. This is severing the next of kin. Your in-laws are not, they're normal people. It's like my friend from high school. If I don't call him in a couple of years, I'm not sinful. If I don't call him in 20 years, I'm not sinful. I'm only sinful if he invites me and I do not attend. I'm only sinful if he meets me and says, Assalamu alaikum, and I look the other way and I pretend I did not see him. Then I'm sinful, whether he's a stranger or in my in-laws. So for you, if you don't invite them home, if you don't uh, call them every week or so, or every month or so, you have no sin, none whatsoever. But it is, you should be diplomatic. You should win the hearts of people rather than uh, 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 exchange hatred and holding grudges against one another. If they don't call, drop them a call, drop them an email, drop them an SMS. And after a while, they'll be ashamed of their acts, of you reaching out and they are not doing the same. And by this, you will win their hearts, inshallah.